a four. Okay. Principle number four. Principle number four says it talks about the starting and ending point. Okay, so this um the root locus. So you again remember the root locus talks about the path traced by the poles of the closed loop system. Okay, as k the gain varies from zero to infinity for what we are dealing with actually. It can vary from negative infinity to positive infinity, but for our design, we are using k varying from zero to infinity. Um, later, we'll hint on what changes. Uh, something very small changes when you are dealing with k moving from minus infinity to zero. And therefore, you can do it completely if you are interested. Okay? So, um, but then we are defining this, the, the, the path traced by the um, closed loop poles by observing the open loop transfer function. And with the open loop transfer function, we have access to the open loop poles and open loop zeros, which we have already discussed that they are most often easily to um, derive. Okay, so the root locus actually starts or begins, okay, at a pole of the open loop. Okay, transfer function okay okay so this pose can be finite or infinite and ends at the zeros of the open loop transfer function okay and these zeros again can be finite or infinite okay so in order to um, actually establish this let's consider the closed loop transfer function which is k mg dh all over dg dh plus k mg nh. So as we derived earlier, we said that actually the closed loop transfer function is going to be the gain times the numerator of the um, forward path transfer function times the denominator of the feedback transfer function all divided by the denominator of the forward path transfer function times the denominator of the feedback transfer function plus k times the numerator of the feed, um, forward path transfer function times the numerator of the feedback path transfer function. So with this idea then, we will see that for for very small k, okay, for very small k, that is as k approaches zero, then um, the component here, if k is very, very, very small, then this becomes insignificant, okay? So in that case, we are going to be left with t of s equals k and g dh all over dg dh okay and then this implies that the closed loop so the poles of t of s will be equal to what the poles of t of s is equal to dg dh equals zero so if you factorize this then that or you solve that that is going to give you the poles and therefore that is the same as actually the poles of the open loop transfer function okay the open loop transfer function 
is going to be um, K G H equals N G N H all over D G D H. So you see that the poles will then be equal to the poles of the open loop transfer function. Now, if we assume big, a very big K for big K, okay, that is as K approaches infinity, then the expression, the T of S, you will see that this expression here, uh, so because K is very big, approaching infinity, it means it gains dominance over this expression. So this expression becomes very small and even zero. And therefore, our Ts becomes um, K and G DH all over K and G and H. Okay, there is a small value here, which is approximately zero. And therefore, you will see from here that the poles can be found by factorizing um, our k and g and h equals zero. And so when you solve this, you get the poles as s approaches infinity. <laughs> and that tells us that actually this poles, as we saw from here, is the same as the zeros of the open loop transfer function zeros of the open loop transfer function okay so that is where that um, rule came from that the for k equals zero as we saw from here for k equals zero the root locus will start from the poles okay of the open loop transfer function and then when k gets to infinity the root locus will end at the zeros of the open loop transfer function now then don't let that confuse you with a closed loop transfer function because under all circumstances when it comes to root locus we are dealing with the roots of the characteristic equation which actually are the poles of the closed loop system so the root locus always starts from a pole of the closed loop transfer function and it ends at a pole of the closed loop transfer function but we are not going to factorize to know the poles of the closed loop transfer function we are dealing with the open loop transfer function which are easily known and using that to locate where the closed loop transfer function poles will be and so that is the reason why in terms of the open loop transfer function we said that the root locus starts from a pole of the open loop transfer function when k is equal to zero and then it moves to a zero of the open loop transfer function when k is equal to infinity okay or when k gets very large okay. then the last of the fundamental principles principle number five we will deal with is that the behavior okay so um, before that, let me use that, apply that here, okay? So, for example, for this root locus, this system we had here, if you want to draw the root locus, then is, there is going to be root locus here. There will be one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Then the question is, where will they start from? Well, this will be root locus ending okay and then when we come here you see that there's a root locus that starts from this pole number three number three and then it ends at the zeros numbered four there will be another root locus starting at pole number number five another one starting at pole number six okay and then uh, there will be another one starting at pole number eight and then it will then end at zero number seven. And then there will be another one starting at pool number 10, ending at the zero number nine. There will be one starting at 
pool number 12 ending at the zeros numbered um, 11. So of course, the question is what about the ones that start at, for example, 6 and 5 and the one that starts at um, uh, 1 and 2? Well, um, ends at uh, 1 and 2. So actually, later we'll get to know that when these two coincide, they are going to break off from the real axis and this one is going to be coming to that side okay and so this will be the path that it will trace and you see that it's symmetrical above the axis okay and we'll see why there is no actually from what i showed you earlier you see that we have six poles and six zeros okay um is it six or five okay six poles six zeros and that implies that there will be the number of closed loop poles um, will be six okay and therefore uh, in terms of the open loop um poles because they are equal we don't have any pole at infinity okay that is why nothing is going to infinity so um this is the fourth principle and then we are going to talk about the fifth which is the last principle Okay, that is the behavior at infinity. Okay. The root locus approaches a straight line as asymptote as the locus approaches infinity. So, um, it... As asymptote as the locus approaches infinity. Okay, so the root locus will approach. Um, so when the root locus will have to move to infinity, then it is going to be moving. Um, approaching a line which is uh, an asymptote okay for the root, root locus and passing on that asymptote to infinity okay so it will not be going to infinity on a crooked line okay it's going to go along some asymptotic line okay and that asymptotic line we can easily detect it okay or draw them using two point um, two values so one okay if you want to draw a line in, in the complex plane you need two things you need the either the real and the imaginary okay part of that line or you need the magnitude and the angle of that so here we are going to look for the magnitude and the angle for that asymptotic line and once we know the magnitude and the angle, then we can draw them. Okay, it, they can be one, two, three, or they can be many. Okay, they can be one, they can be two, they can be three, they can be four, they can be five. Um, what is good news about it is if it's only one and you decide to compute the angles, you get the same angle throughout. If there are two, you get two unique angles, and the third angle will be a repetition of the first, the fourth will be a repetition of the second, and so on and so forth. If there are three, um, you compute um, the first three angles and then the third one um, the fourth one is going to be a repetition of the first the second will be a repetition of this um, uh, fifth and so on and so forth uh, the fourth and then the, the 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 sixth will be a repetition of the third and so on and so forth so what you have to know is that um, you can compute the angles but you automatically come to the same angle and the reason is because the um, those lines of asymptote are um, form angles which are equally distributed in a 360 um, uh, ang angle space and therefore um, the sum will be 360 okay, so that's basically what it is we will get to know more about that 
So first, how do you find the real part? Okay, the real part of this asymptotic lines um, or the the crossing point, okay, where it crosses the axis, um, we call that the we got the straight lines. If we find where it crosses the um, real axis and then we find the angle it makes with the real axis, then we'll be able to plot it. Okay. So where it crosses the real axis, we call that point the centroid. Okay, so centroid. And this centroid can be computed by using the expression sum of all the finite poles minus summation of all the finite zeros all over the total number of poles minus the total number of zeros. Okay, so that is how you plot it. And then you can find the second, which is the angle of the asymptote. So the angle will be given by, as we learned, 2k plus 1 times pi or times 180 degrees all over the total number of poles minus total number of zeros. Okay, so that is basically what you are going to get. Okay, <clears throat> and so right from this, you know that, for example, if I have a system like this, where k g h equals s over s plus one, s plus two. Okay, so this k, this k takes values zero, one, two, and so on and so forth. You can use plus minus plus minus. Okay, but I'm just using the positive numbers. It doesn't change anything. Okay, so if I take this system for example, we have poles equals minus 1, minus 2 implies number of poles equals 2. We have zeros equals 0. This implies number of zeros equals 1. So what can I do immediately from this? Well, if I plot this, okay, I can see that my 0 is here minus 1, minus 2, my pole is here, and another pole is here, okay? Then, what do I do? Well, using the principle we studied, we will say that the root locus will lie here, and then the second one will lie here. And then, the other principle we studied says it will start from this, okay, and ends at this zero, so that one is done. And then immediately you look at it, you see that another one will start at this. But where is it going to end? Well, it's going to infinity because the other pole is located at infinity. Okay, so it's going to end at infinity. Now, if it's going to end at infinity, then um, what line of asymptote is it going to pass on? Well, the centroid will be calculated as minus 1 plus minus 2, okay, minus 0, all over 2 minus 1, and that is going to give us minus 1 minus 2, which is equal to minus 3, okay, so of course, um, it means the centroid is going to be somewhere here, minus 3. Okay, and the angle of the centroid will be equal to, okay, so k, 2k plus 1 times 180 over 2 minus 1, which is 2k plus 1 times 180, because divide by 1. So if I choose k equals... 0, I'll have my theta A equals 180 times 1. If I choose K equals 1, I'll get my theta A equals 3 times 
180 which is 360 plus 180 okay which is the same as 180 okay if you take an angle 360 plus 180 it's the same as 180 if you take your k equals 2 you get theta a equals again 5 times 180 which is 360 plus 360 plus 180 which is 180 so since we only have one pole located at infinity okay you will see that the angle is going to be 180 you can keep plugging in all the case and you will still be getting 180 so once you know you, leave, you need only one angle after plugging in zero you just stop there okay so after plugging in zero you stop there so actually this is going to be our root locus it's that simple what will happen if for example we had like um, three poles okay so if the system was like this if our system was something like this okay then you have one here okay so let's say we had a zero here we had a pole here we had a pole here um, and another pole here then immediately using the same principle we we'll see that there will be root locus here okay and then there will be another one here all right so the one here of course will originate and end at the zero originate from the pole and at the zero so we are done with that but the one here okay is going to proceed because they will break off okay this is coming from here this is coming from there when they hit they will break off and when they break off they, they don't have any poles to match here so they will have to go to poles and uh, zeros to match here so they'll go to zeros at infinity okay so which line of asymptote are they going to move on so let me make this uh, minus two sorry let me make this two one minus one minus two okay so two one minus one uh, eight this is zero sorry zero and minus one so in that case the asymptote we have the centroid will be equal to summation of poles minus zeros summation all over number of poles minus number of zeros okay so what will this give you if you sum all the poles it will be minus one plus two that is one and then you subtract the summation of the zeros okay, okay plus zero so okay and then the zeros is going to be plus one okay all over okay, all over um, the number of poles which is three minus number of zeros which is one and that will give you what one minus one over Okay, so this will be positive 1 minus 1 over 2, which is 0 0.5. Okay, so our sigma A is going to be somewhere here. Okay, and then the angles, so theta A's will be, so you get 2K plus 1, 180, all over 3 minus one which is 2k plus 1 times 180 all over 2 so if k equals 0 we get 180 over 2 which is 90 and if k equals 1 we get um, 3 into 180 over 2 which is 270 degrees okay you can compute the other one k equals 2 and you get 5 into 180 over 2 okay and that is going to give you what okay it's going to be 90 times 5 9 5 45 okay so that will be 450 okay 450 
and that you can check to be the same as uh, it's going to be 450 yeah that's 360 plus 90 and that is 90 okay so you see that we are back to this and this we know because we have only two angles that we need to calculate so if i come back to the plot you see that this will be one asymptote going up the other going down so actually this will look like this okay and then this one will also come here like this and then they will all move on the asymptote to infinity okay so this is the sketching of root locus using basic principles okay so we'll end here and then we will continue with um, more details of how to sketch the root locus